Okay, hello everyone, it's Katie here. I'm just going to open full screen so you can actually see me. Hi everyone, it's Katie here, great to see you. I'm hoping this is working. Okay, saying here that we've gone live. Is this working on YouTube? If you're watching, do you want to just drop me a message in the comments saying hi, tell me you can see and hear me okay, and this is all working. We had some tech issues last week when I was trying to run um, a webinar, so it's always good to know this is actually working. Okay, something is coming up. I'm going to open here on my phone to check it's actually working this time after the issues last week. This is not looking too promising. I can see a blank screen on my phone. I do not like the look of a blank screen. Let's jump back to this view. Did this work? Hmm, what's going on here? Let's try again. Can you see and hear me okay? If you can see and hear me okay, please could you just drop a message in the comments saying hi. I'm going to, I can't see and hear me okay. <laughs> I'm going to drop a message myself. Hi everyone, can you see and hear me? Okay, okay, English with Bob is coming to saying Mike is working. Okay, at least you can hear me. I, I'm looking at my phone, I can't seem to see me, but I can see me here on StreamYard. Can you guys see me okay? Okay, Pedro's commenting, can hear you, but can't see you. That is not, well, I mean, it's a start. You can hear me, great. <laughs> Hi, great to hear that you guys can hear me. Um, I'm not sure what's up with the camera. Let me have a play around with the camera settings. In the meantime, I'm gonna start the countdown on the screen here. So while I'm trying to set up the camera, if anyone wants to introduce themselves in the comments and say hi, um, that would be fantastic. I am gonna try and get the camera working because it's a bit of a weird having a webinar where you can't actually see me. Let me stop the camera, start it again, and see if that works. Okay, I just restarted the camera. Any luck with the camera this time? Aha! I can see myself now. I'm looking here on YouTube. It looks like my face is there, which is a good start. I apologize for the weird lighting and stuff that's going on here. I had it all set up on my green screen, and then my computer was just, I don't know, it was having a moment. <laughs> so we quickly scrapped the green screen, ran to the other side of the room with my kind of general messed up background here. So the lighting is now a little bit awkward. So I apologize if my face is kind of shadowed, um, but we're going with it. Okay, I can see people commenting. It looks like it's now working. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your patience. Always tech issues with these kind of things, but this is an improvement on last week. So anyone who joined us last week, thank you so much for your patience when I started half an hour late after all kinds of disasters. Um, so at least it was just a couple of minutes here. Okay, so feel free to introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about who you are, where you're tuning in from, what do you teach? What are you excited to learn about today? Whatever you'd like to let us know in the chat, that would be great. I'm just gonna check that all of the various things like the Facebook posts and the emails and stuff are all working to make sure that everyone's got the notifications. Okay, the email piece has gone, so that's great. Uh, let's double check that it's gone live on Facebook too, or not live. I did it on Facebook just as a post, and we'll have everyone here on YouTube, so it's all in one place. Ooh, did this work? Your scheduled post has gone live. Good, thank you, Facebook. We're live now. Right. Okay, thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm just gonna call up who we've got here. So we've got... I've got here Suyata from Malaysia tuning in. Great to see you, thanks for joining us. Pedro's commented saying, great to see you. Thank you so much, love your webinars. Really appreciate that, thank you so much, Pedro. Um, I hope you find these webinars helpful. I'll try and add as much value and pack all the information in as I can. Um, there's lots to learn today, so I hope you'll find this webinar helpful as well. Thank you so much for your support. Good, let me see, we've got Heather here tuning in. Oh, it's loading comments. I should warn you guys, my computer is seven years old now, six years old, it's, it's, it's getting on a bit. So there are occasional delays and lags with things. So apologies if I don't quite keep on top of the comments every now and then. Jess tuning from Florida. Hi Jess, great to see you. 
Melody worked at VIP for six years. Wow, that's dedication. Then Italki and now teaching independently. Fantastic. Hope you find today's webinar helpful. We're going to be learning all about how to find even more independent students, particularly from the Chinese market. So I hope that helps you out, Melody. Um, we've got here Loretta tuning in from Connecticut in the USA. Fantastic. I'm from the UK, by the way. If anyone can't tell from my accent, I'm from the UK, but currently living in Japan, hence the kind of Japan themed background going on here. Okay, we've got Bob. Hi, Bob. Great to see you from Chelmsford at the moment, normally based in Poland. Awesome. Looking into getting into the Chinese market. Awesome. Today's webinar is going to have a load of stuff for anyone who's new to sort of targeting the Chinese market, and also anyone who's been teaching Chinese students for a while. I'm sure there's loads you'll pick up on. But yeah, for, for you, Bob, because you're just starting out with uh, marketing to Chinese students, loads and loads and loads of stuff in today's webinar. So I do hope you find this helpful. Okay, we've got Robbie. Hi, Robbie. Great to see you. And Daniel. Greetings from American language teacher and VIP kid holding pattern teacher. Not sure what that is. VIP kid teacher of some kind, I'm guessing. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. In Taipei, Taiwan, not too far from me. I'm, I'm across the water in Kyoto. So great to see you. Cool. Uh, Melody's saying from Wisconsin. Wis Wisconsin? Wisconsin. I'm sorry, I'm not American. My pronunciation of American states is terrible. From <laughs> somewhere in America and hoping to get more students in China. Fantastic. Cool. Okay, let's just double check. I haven't got any messages from anyone saying, Katie, webinars aren't working or any disasters like that because you know how these things happen. Good, no one has messaged me. So <laughs> hopefully everyone's got the email notifications. Everyone's seen us here on Facebook. I've seen quite a few people now joining us live. So let's get started. Okay. So yeah, welcome to today's webinar. Today's webinar is all about designing your Chinese social media funnel strategy or your marketing strategy in general. It's like basically taking a step back before you jump in and start advertising, take a step back and plan your overall marketing strategy, uh, what platforms you're gonna use, what kind of content you're gonna be posting, what are the gonna be the steps that your leads go through before they start taking classes with you? Because no one buys stuff straight away, right? You need to kind of work them through what we call a funnel or a process that guides people who've just seen you somewhere online and converts them into paying students. That's what we're going to learn about today, how to put together that marketing strategy. So that is the plan. Oh, we've got a clarification here from Daniel about what we meant by a holding pattern teacher from VIP. Thanks, I've never heard of this. So thank you for the clarification. He's saying, holla Pedro, we're no longer allowed to teach Chinese kids online. So, yeah, <laughs> we wanted that kind of disaster happened the other year. So, I have a contract with VIPK but no classes. I'm sorry to hear you've got no classes, but it's like good to know you're still on the contract on the system, right? Um, so maybe in the future, these things, I don't really know much about VIP kid. I never taught with them because they didn't hire British teachers. Um, but hopefully in time to come, maybe there's things will pick up again there, who knows? Um, but on a positive note, today we're gonna learn loads of stuff about how you can be independent and find your own students. So this will I'm sure be helpful for that. Okay, let's jump in because there's always loads to go through. I have a habit of rambling. I also have a habit of talking too fast. So if I'm rambling or talking too fast, please write in the comments, Katie, shut up or Katie, slow down. I would genuinely really appreciate it um, because yeah, I always talk too quickly on these things. So hello everyone. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Katie. I'm the director of Abridge Academy. So you might have seen me in various places online, particularly on Facebook and here on YouTube, um, mostly saying sign up for the Abridge Academy curriculum and things like that. Um, that's me. I've been an online teacher since 2013. Um, I'm also a qualified classroom teacher from the UK. Um, and previously I lived, studied and taught in China before. Um, before Right now I'm now living in Japan, actually. I'm a classroom teacher here in Japan, as well as all of the stuff with Abridge Academy, everything I do online as well. I did a micro MBA from Shanghai Jiao Tong University a couple of years ago. Um, and I also co-founded a Chinese online ESL startup program in 2020. So those kind of two experiences gave me quite a good insight into things like marketing in China, really understanding the Chinese market and Chinese students um, from maybe a different perspective than some other teachers might have had if you've just taught with platforms and things previously. And as I was saying, right now, I'm currently a classroom ESL teacher here in Japan. And I also teach online. I sell curriculum. I sell courses. I, I don't know what I do. I do everything. <laughs> so I'm in various places all over the internet at the moment doing things like these webinars and stuff. Just putting stuff out there to help teachers like you who want to go independent, find your own students um, and sort of find your own online teaching income independently of all of those platforms. So that is a bit about me. So I've got a quick question for you guys just to get us started. Today we're going to be learning about Chinese social media marketing. A lot of these strategies do apply to other markets too. 
um, but the exact platforms we're talking about are going to be very China focused. So is anyone here already on Chinese social media? And if so, which ones do you use? Or if you don't use any yet, you've heard of some, what do you know about Chinese social media so far? Because um, I know there's a few that people might have heard about on Facebook and things. Um, be interesting to hear what everyone in this chat is using at the moment or has heard of. And while you do that, I'm just going to quickly catch up. Is there any questions in the chat? Feel free, by the way, as we go along, to drop questions and stuff in the chat too. I will sort of jump in and look at those questions as we go through. So, yeah. Okay, so big question for you guys. What Chinese social media platforms do you already know or use? If you don't know any, that's fine. <laughs> Let us know. It's always good to know where the audience is at in terms of your existing knowledge of this. By the way, there's a delay between me talking and then it actually streaming to YouTube and there's someone writing a comment and then the comment showing back here. There's about maybe a 20 second delay. So if I don't see your message for like half, half a minute or so, it's because of that. Okay, Max is saying Douyin. Yes, Douyin is also known as Chinese TikTok. It's actually owned by the same company. They're both owned by ByteDance. Um, and they, Douyin was the original TikTok and then they made TikTok as the international version. Great. Yeah, Douyin is a very popular platform. They've actually put on using Douyin recently, um, but it is, it is a well-known platform for marketing in China. But without borders, commenting with WeChat, absolutely, 100%. WeChat is an essential app if you're targeting Chinese students. It's a bit like WhatsApp. It's a kind of messaging app. We'll be learning more about that later on today. Melody saying WeChat again, yep, and Xiaohongshu. Xiaohongshu, also known as Little Red Book, is another one we've been talking about a lot today. It's kind of similar to Instagram in many ways, um, but it also has kind of hints of, say, Pinterest and a few other platforms. Uh, but yes, definitely great ideas. Pedro saying, just using WeChat at the moment, heard of some others, but not taking the plunge with them yet. We've got here, how's food review? Hi, great name, I love it. Um, I'm on WeChat, Little Red Book, and Billy Billy. Awesome. Billy Billy is a bit like Chinese YouTube. Um, it's kind of similar to YouTube in many ways. Cool. Bob has opened an account on Xiaohongshu, but not done anything yet. Listen up for the rest of the webinar. You'll have loads of great content to help you today. Max commenting with Douyin and Kuai Shou. So Douyin and Kuai Shou are both TikTok type platforms. Douyin being literally TikTok is owned by the same company. Kuai Shou being another Chinese company, very similar to TikTok. Um, it's slightly more focused on the live streaming side. But yeah, I actually got a video comparing different Chinese social media platforms somewhere on my channel. Um, I think it might be linked below. So after today's webinar, feel free to check out um, that video which is talking about all the different Chinese social media platforms and comparing them. Mm -hmm. Quite a few people, so loads of comments here. Great, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, Tondi, Xiao Shu, but haven't posted. Another vote for WeChat. And yes, another vote for WeChat. Excellent. Great to hear that. Great. And Max comes in with QQ. Yes, QQ is kind of like the precursor to WeChat. Um, it's also owned by Tencent, same company. Um, it's a messaging kind of app. Cool. Daniel here. Daniel saying just on WeChat and in Taiwan using Line and Kakao Talk in Korea. Fantastic. Yeah, these platforms are all actually quite similar in terms of being. WhatsApp style platforms, I would say. So great, good to hear familiar with a few of those. Heather, great to see you again, Heather. Heather's saying, started posting videos on Xiaohongshu, definitely feeling less daunting and the whole process is getting easier. Great. Yeah, it's gonna be very scary when you're first starting out, um, but definitely once you start posting things, it starts to kind of come together and in time, it also comes a lot quicker than to post stuff as well. In time, you feel a lot more confident posting stuff. Okay, great. Thank you so much for all of those insights, everyone. Sounds like quite a few people have got some ideas of different platforms. A few people are getting started, which is great to hear. So I think, what do I have next? Oh yes, I'm going to quickly summarize two key platforms we're going to be learning about today. And these are the ones I'm going to be particularly focusing on. Some of the others that we've mentioned will link into these, um, but these are the two that I want to really focus on in today's webinar, and that is WeChat and Xiaohongshu. So the first one is WeChat. We have a nice summary here on the slide. And WeChat is essentially a private messaging platform, a bit like WhatsApp, although it has many, many, many more features as well. So it has 1.2 billion monthly users. So it really is a must have platform when you're targeting the Chinese market. Bear in mind, I think the Chinese population is maybe 1.4 billion or something. So it's something like 80% of Chinese adults use WeChat on a pretty much a daily basis. That's how ubiquitous, that's how important WeChat is for people in China. 
it's used for direct messaging, like it's basically replaced the concept of texting in China. Um, people just send people a WeChat message. It's also used for things like group chats. You can post WeChat moments, which are like little image or text posts. You can post videos. There's an official account section. If you've got a registered business, it's a bit more complicated. That is the setup. Similarly, they also have mini apps that's used by a lot of businesses. Like if you talk with some of the companies before, I think companies like VIP Kid and the like had mini apps within WeChat that students could use to join classes. Um, so yeah, it's it's a sort of all-encompassing mega platform. And it's absolutely essential, like absolutely essential for day-to-day -day communications with your students. So if you're teaching Chinese students, this is the first app you absolutely have to have on your phone. But it does have some limited marketing potential. Because it's a private messaging focused app, there's not that much potential to kind of go viral and reach a huge audience. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this later on, but it's more of a messaging platform. Um, but yeah, it is an absolute essential one to have though. Okay, we've got a few more questions here. Pedro is saying, do other countries use WeChat much? To be honest, not really. I think I was looking at the stats previously and it was randomly popped from a few really odd countries like Spain or somewhere random, or I think a few South American countries. But I think it seems to be more with like Chinese expat populations rather than taking over foreign apps like WhatsApp, if that makes sense. I've got a question here. How can we open a WeChat business account? How, what documents you need, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is something we're not gonna be talking so much about today um, because to open a Chinese, uh, like a business account, you basically, not 100%, but generally you need to have a business entity in China. It's incredibly complicated and expensive and not something I would recommend if you're just an independent teacher or even just a small agency or small overseas business, um, you don't necessarily want to be launching a WeChat business account or registering a business entity in China. Um, so I would recommend just focusing on creating an individual account. Everything we talk about today and just in general with WeChat marketing that we come across on my channel is talking about using it as an independent teacher. I have used WeChat from a business perspective. Um, Abridge Academy has a tutoring program, partnership with a Chinese agency, and we do have a WeChat business account for that, registered through the Chinese business. But it's a very different kind of system. And to be honest, since I'm not recommending things like paid advertising or that kind of stuff. There's no huge advantage. Um, so yeah, but great question, thank you. Okay, cool, we've got some great positive feedback in the comments. Nikki's saying, your comment's very encouraging. Yes, thank you, Heather, for sharing that feedback. As I was saying, if you get, once you start posting on Shao, I'm sure you do get a lot more confident. And Heather saying, I was terrified. It took me about two weeks to prepare my video and subtitles. Yeah, it's really daunting, that first step. But once you've got it, it starts making a lot more sense and become a lot more familiar um, going forward. Okay, great. Cool, so that was a quick intro to WeChat. As you say, must have a platform for messaging, essentially. The second app I want to talk about today is Xiaohongshu. I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail on these platforms because as I say, we did a webinar previously about these, but um, the one I want to do, tell you a little bit more about, gosh, words today. I can speak English, honest. Um, today is Xiaohongshu. Xiaohongshu, also known as Little Red Book, is a bit like Instagram. And if you look at the pictures here, it's kind of, you know, a visual kind of platform, very much focused around images and videos. They call themselves a visual microblogging and social e-commerce platform, um, which is a, a bit vague. Essentially, think of it a bit like Instagram. It has 100 million monthly users, which is still a very large chunk of the Chinese market, the majority of whom are women aged 19 to 35 in tier one cities. If you're teaching Chinese kids, this is a really great platform to be advertising on because their parents are often fitting into that age range. Um, and when I say tier one cities, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but these are basically the, those sort of top financial cities in China, like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Shenzhen. Um, this is where people have a much higher spending power um, and they're looking for those really high quality classes that you guys are able to offer. So Xiaohongshu is very much focused on videos and images. You can post carousel posts, again, very similar to Instagram. You can do something called hey posts, which are basically like Instagram stories. Um, so yeah, lots of different kinds of content you can be posting on Xiaohongshu. And the key thing I want to emphasize here is that if you focus on valuable educational content, you can generally reach a really wide audience on Xiaohongshu. WeChat is a messaging platform, it's quite private. Xiaohongshu is very much a putting yourself out there platform. Your content has the potential to reach a huge number of people. It's driven by an algorithm that recommends your content to people who've got no existing link with you. So you're not having to rely on any existing contacts or student base or networking, um, which means that this is a great place if you're just starting out 
with reaching the Chinese market because you don't need to have any existing market traction to start um, you know, your content reaching people on Xiao Hong Shu. Um, and yeah, if you're good at what you do, if you're good at teaching and you're creating content that's educational and teaching things to your followers, we'll talk more about that later, you can really grow an audience on Xiao Hong Shu and then convert them into paying students. And that is the topic of today's webinar, don't worry. I had a very quick few stats about Xiao Hong Shu just to help out anyone who's not so familiar with some of the terminology we've been talking about. Um, when we talk about city type, we said that most users are in tier one cities. Tier one cities, as I said, were like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen are the original kind of four tier one cities. It's now expanded to include what's called the new tier one, which are like up and coming cities that are now I don't know, up and come to becoming that kind of level. Um, but these are where people have a high spending power. They're often quite internationally focused sort of cities. There's a bit more awareness of an international links. And it's where students tend to be money rich and time poor. They've got the money to spend on classes, but they haven't got the time to waste on pointless classes. They want high quality classes and they'll pay good money for high quality classes, which is really great if you're a teacher who's offering high quality classes online and want to earn a decent income. It's overwhelmingly female, the platform is. Like 89% of users are thought to be female. It, the, the stats are a little bit varied on this depending on where you look, but essentially the vast majority of people on Xiaomi are female and aged 18 to 34. As I said, great to focus on if you're targeting maybe university students, uh, young professionals, or if you're also teaching young kids because their parents, particularly their mothers, are going to fit into the category of people on Xiaomi Show to Xiaomi Shu. Let's have a quick look at the comments. Any, oh gosh, loads of questions. <laughs> Thank you everyone for all your engagement. I really appreciate it. Um, Bob's commenting saying, still seems very difficult to open a WeChat account from overseas, haven't succeeded yet. Yes, I have a video on my channel about WeChat's um, verification. If, after today's webinar, go across to my channel, have a look for that. It's got some suggestions on how you can get your WeChat account verified. Essentially, because there used to be a big issue with spam bots on WeChat, like a really big issue with spam bots. When I first set up WeChat, they didn't have this verification process. Every group chat I was in was just overwhelmed with spam nonsense all the time. So to tackle that issue, we just introduced this verification system where you have to verify that you're a real person by getting someone to scan a QR code on your WeChat app. Um, in theory, that's very easy to do if you live in China and there's loads of Chinese people around and you have real life friends who have WeChat who can just quickly scan you all sorted. It's more difficult, of course, for those of us who are located overseas because you might not know anyone in person who has WeChat. Um, my top tip, which is also one I see Pedro has also put here, Bob, you could be friendly with your local Chinese restaurant and they might help. Yeah, that's to be honest, my number one suggestion as well. If you can find Chinese people in your local community, many um, Chinese expats will still have WeChat because it is a very convenient method of communication with any relatives or friends they've got back in China. So that's a really great place to start. You can also ask people online, but it's, it's difficult sometimes to find people online. As I say, I've got a video with lots of suggestions on how to get it verified. Um, yeah. Oh, this is a great one. suggestion from Daniel as well. You can reach out to your local university's Chinese Students and Scholars Association. Really great idea. If there's like somewhere offering Chinese classes locally, or if you say a student population that's got a lot of Chinese students, and reach out to them. Cool. Okay, question here from Tondi. Sorry, hiccups. I just I just stuffed myself with sushi, by the way. Today is Setsubun, which is like a Japanese celebration for the supposedly the start of spring. It snowed in Kyoto last week, so I'm not convinced that spring is quite here yet. But um, I've just stuffed myself with sushi, so I'm hiccuping occasionally. I do apologize. Okay, Tondi's saying, what can you advise someone who wants to post for the first time on Xiao Shu? We're gonna get to that later. So my advice would be keep listening. <laughs> we'll get onto that in a moment. Um, yeah. Okay, so that was a quick intro there to WeChat and Xiaoshu. Today's focus of today's webinar is how to put together what we call a funnel strategy. So stepping back from the original platforms, just thinking overall, what is your marketing strategy? And we often call this a marketing funnel. The idea being sort of funneling large numbers of leads, funneling those into being paying students. And you often see visuals like this um, kind of representing that process. And we're gonna kind of zoom in and look into each step of this a little bit uh, as we go through today's webinar. But essentially, what I want to show here is that Xiao Shu is the first step of your marketing funnel. Because it's somewhere you can reach a huge number of leads and it's sort of driven by an algorithm that recommends you directly to people who've got no existing link with you. So you're able to reach completely new leads, um, often quite quickly if your content really takes off. This is the very start of your marketing funnel. You're going to be posting the most valuable, useful educational content that's going to draw people in to follow you on Xiao Hong Shu, start building that relationship. 
And as your audience works their way down this funnel, you get to a key stage here where you want to convert them into paying students. And at this point here, you want to get them onto your WeChat. WeChat is a private messaging system. You're able to much more directly communicate with individual leads. Um, Shangshu does have a messaging platform that has a little messaging bit where people can message you, but it's not got very many features. People don't tend to check it very often. It, they often have their notifications turned off. Whereas WeChat, they have their notifications on, so they can see your messages. Um, it's got so many more features, like you can send files and GIFs and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so you want to get them onto your WeChat. And then within WeChat, you're then going to do that final sales phase where you encourage them to sign up for your classes. So that's just the overview I want to give you here, this idea of getting people from Xiaohu to reach a wide audience, then persuading them to add you on WeChat. It's a bit like how, you know, sometimes you see a company advertising on somewhere like Instagram or Facebook, and they'll ask you for your email address, right? They'll say, sign up to our newsletter or something, and then they're able to email you about things. Same idea here, using Xiaohu to reach a large number of people, then you want to get them onto your WeChat. So that's just how these two platforms are working together in your funnel strategy. OK, I'm rambling again. Let's have a look at seeing some more questions in the comments. Um, OK, people are just talking about WeChat verification, but I think we'll just focus today on the next part. If anyone's got questions about WeChat verification and stuff, there's a link in the comments in the description below to our Facebook group. And there's a thread there all talking about WeChat verification. So do check that out. OK, so this is our overall funnel strategy. Before we jump into the details of this funnel, though, I just want to very quickly tell you about our WeChat Marketing Bootcamp that's going to be starting in just a couple of weeks. So it's on the 13th yes, of February, and lasts for a week. And we're going to learn about all kinds of things to do with WeChat marketing. In particular, we'll be looking at how to optimize your WeChat account using WeChat groups, uh, posting content on WeChat moments, and then converting leads into students by making that final sale. And then using referral marketing strategies, which links back into the top of your funnel again by finding new students using your existing contacts. Um, so this is like the final stage of the funnel that we're going to be talking about today. I just want to send you the details right now. And there's also, I think, in the description, I'm going to put it in the comments too. Come on, you can work. Come on, computer. OK, just put a link there in the comments. And you can sign up for our WeChat Marketing Bootcamp. It's totally free. And it's in our Facebook group. And you can learn all about the WeChat side of this marketing funnel. Ooh, I've got a question here from Joy. Someone asked me on Xiaohongshu to connect on Weibo instead of WeChat. Is that wise? So the more medical professionals on that platform. This is a really interesting point. Uh, Weibo is what I still call a viral platform. I would still recommend trying to get onto WeChat if you can, because WeChat is more useful for the direct messaging. Weibo is a bit like Twitter. Um, it's often referred to as Chinese Twitter. It's got quite a lot of differences now. But if you look at it historically, it was more similar to Twitter. Um, I would probably recommend, though, if you're targeting medical professionals, Weibo could be a good place to advertise instead of Xiaohongshu for the first stage of your marketing funnel. They're probably just a little bit wary of giving you their WeChat details just because it feels a bit personal that like they're giving out personal contact details. That might be um, the case here. But yes, but if you're sign up for our WeChat marketing bootcamp, you want to learn more about WeChat marketing. We have some wonderful feedback. I'm not going to read out all the details of these. I know we've got lots to talk about in today's webinar, which is the main focus I want to get on. Um, but we had some really wonderful feedback when I ran the WeChat Marketing Bootcamp a couple of months ago. Uh, the first round of the WeChat Marketing Bootcamp. So we're going to be running a second round of the same bootcamp starting in a couple of weeks. So everyone loved it last time. <laughs> Hope you guys love it again this time around. Moving swiftly on. Oh, I thought I had one more advertising thing. Uh, other thing as well, if you want to learn a bit more about um, social media marketing in China, particularly the two platforms we've been talking about today, Xiaohongshu and WeChat, I also have a series of self-paced courses just teaching you all of the advice and all of the suggestions and uh, so much detail and there's video tutorials and everything in these self-paced courses about WeChat and Xiaohongshu marketing. Again, I'm going to put the link in the comments if anyone wants to check these out and they are also in the description below of this video if anyone's watching the replay. That is my sales pitch <laughs> done. Let's move back on to the topic of today's webinar then. So today we're talking about that marketing funnel. At the very top of the funnel, we've got our Xiaohu. And our Xiaohu, we're trying to post content to reach a wide range of people, or rather our target audience. We want to reach our target audience. We want to reach lots of our target audience to get them into our marketing funnel. So I just want to ask you guys now, before we launch into this, what do you think you should be posting on Xiaohu? Think of it a bit like Instagram. What kind of content could you be posting? in order to reach your target audience, your target students. What do you think you could post? It's 
sorry. I don't actually use Streamer very often, so I'm just playing around with some of the different layouts here. I thought I could do this. Awesome. Now you can see my beautiful face even bigger and more ugly. Um, so yes, what do you guys think you could be posting on Xiaohong Shu in order to reach more of your target audience? Great. Loretta's commenting, short educational clips and helpful ideas. Definitely. So it's something that's useful and valuable to your target audience. Melly's saying something similar. I English tips, idioms. That's a great one. Depending on who your target audience is, if they're interested in learning something like idioms, then that's definitely great content to be posting. What are you saying? Educational content. Absolutely. Okay. Got a question here. Depends. How long is the maximum video length? Is it like TikTok, three minutes, or YouTube stories, one minute? So actually, I think the maximum video length I want to say at the top of my head is about 20 minutes. You can you can actually post really long videos on Xiaohongshu if you want to. However, I wouldn't recommend posting really long videos because in reality, not many people are going to watch through more than a minute or two. So I would recommend, bearing in mind we're using this as a marketing platform to reach lots of people and you want to kind of grab them quite quickly, short focus videos that focus on just one short thing um, work best. So one minute to three minutes, I would say, is a good length for a video on Xiaohongshu. You can post much longer stuff if you want to, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Hey, Daniel's saying maybe include a YouTube video about an English topic. Yeah, so something educational, something useful, something that your target audience is going to learn something from. Um, definitely. Great. Sounds like we're all on the right track, which is great to see. So, strategy. The first thing to do is think about what the purpose of your posts are. Why are you posting on Xiaohongshu? I mean, it's not just for the fun of it, right? We don't just post stuff because I know I love sharing about pictures of my food I ate today. We have a goal in posting content on Xiaohongshu. So firstly, we're trying to attract the right target audience. We don't want to attract just anyone. We want to attract someone specifically looking for classes in your niche. So maybe you're targeting, I don't know, young professionals who have they just left university, they just started in the workplace, and they want to try and move into a more internationally focused company in the tech industry, picking one specific niche. Um, so they need to learn English, they want to do well in the interview and get this dream job. So you've now down your niche, you've figured out who your target audience is, you want to post content that's going to reach that target audience, and not, say, mothers who are interested in phonics classes for their kids, because that's the wrong audience, who's not going to buy your classes that you're offering. You also want to really establish your expertise, and you know, show off that you know what you're talking about, and you're going to be a great teacher. And also, you're going to start building this relationship. However, we are not trying to sell yet. Xiaohongshu is not a sales platform. Um, it's not a place for directly advertising and saying, buy now, buy now, buy now, special deal, blah, blah, blah. We're not here to sell. We're here to attract the right people, show that you're an expert in what you do, and start to build that relationship. Because it's the very top of our funnel. Most people who come across you on Xiaohongshu have never heard of you before. So they're not going to be ready to make that buying decision yet. I'm just looking at the time. Oh my gosh, I'm really bad at time management. <laughs> Let's swiftly move on. So the first type of content, and many of you guys were talking about this in the comments already. Um, the first type of content I particularly focus on is what I call value posts. A value post is what it says on the tin. It's valuable. It's teaching something new for your niche audience. So for example, this post here that I made, um, which got lots of really great engagements and comments and views, and also brought in a lot of new leads, was just about uh, websites for reading about science. That was the topic. So for me, my niche is teaching mostly teenage students who are looking to study science abroad at a top UK university. And so they're trying to learn like scientific English and skills that relate to sort of academic English. We also cover debating and things like that. That's my niche. So this is very much focused on content that's teenagers who've already got a decent-ish English level, um, but want to really work and build on that and are interested in science. These are good resources for them to check out. No mention at all of my classes here. It's just genuinely adding value for my audience. So the idea of these posts is going to bring in new leads um, because the algorithm loves this stuff. The algorithm recognizes that people really like your content. They're all engaging with it. They're liking it. There's a little heart because they're liking things on Xiaohongshu. They're saving it. Again, the little star button here is a collect. It means they've saved it, so they'll come back to later. And all of this tells the algorithm your content is awesome. And it recommends you to more people who will like content like that. So it brings in lots of leads and it also establishes you as an expert because you're sharing useful resources, you clearly know what you're talking about. So this would really be the majority of your posts. 
Now, I've done webinars before, we talked a lot more detailed suggestions for these kind of value posts. But basically, the idea here is think about what your audience wants to learn about. What might they be searching for? What, what can you add? How can you add value? These can be videos, they could be images, they could be here. This is a kind of graphic I made on Canva, all this kind of stuff. Ooh, seeing lots of comments. Thank you, everyone. Um, well, a question here from King Minos. King Minos. Five minutes is the max. Yeah, I think if you're posting within the Xiaoshu app, there is a shorter limit, like about five minutes or so. If you're posting within the website version of Xiaoshu, you can actually upload much longer videos. Um, but I wouldn't recommend going more than five minutes anyway. So, yeah. Bob saying, get students. Yes, that's our goal, get students. Oh, I've just realized I didn't make the slides bigger. Let's make the slides bigger so you can actually see what I was talking about. Okay, Daniel's saying, I'd love to catch the eye of my former VIP kids, students, parents. Definitely, I reach out and connect with those students. Oh, got Brenda tuning in. Hi, Brenda, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. We're just getting started with the actual content. I rambled way too much earlier on, so <laughs> don't worry, you haven't missed too much. Um, Petra's asking, the Chinese at the bottom, is it roughly a translation of the English at the top? Great question. So I would always recommend posting in Chinese. So you're, the actual written bit of the post. The image doesn't matter too much. Um, and I like to post in English because I'm trying to target students who have a reasonable English level already. Also, I'm lazy in the idea of having to try and write the whole thing in English. Sorry, in Chinese. Oh, sometimes I just don't, I'm not in the mood for it. So I just wrote it in English. But the actual text underneath, so the post title and the post description and all the hashtags and stuff, write those in Chinese because people will be searching for keywords and things in Chinese. If you post in English, then the app thinks that you're like the only people who will engage well with it are also people who know English, so probably other teachers. So the algorithm thinks that your content is aimed at English speakers. So it will recommend it to other English speaking people. But you don't want to reach English speaking people. You want to reach people who don't know English yet because you're going to teach it to them. So you want to reach Chinese speaking people. Therefore, you want to be writing the actual post description text bit in Chinese. Um, if you don't know Chinese, don't worry. Um, you can just use a translation app. It doesn't have to be perfect. People understand that foreigners don't know much Chinese. They probably know you'll be using a translation app. Um, for me, like I studied Chinese to quite a reasonable level. Like I wrote, I wrote all my posts myself in Chinese, but I know there are grammar mistakes, and people forgive me for that. They don't mind. Got a question here: Can you list class price and promotional valuable content on Xiaoshu? Or is that too sales like? Two sales like? Um, I would recommend don't directly mention your classes. Um, certainly don't directly mention prices in your like value post, post you're trying to reach a new audience because they'll immediately think you're trying to sell stuff and they're not going to engage well with it. Also, Xiaoshu actually has a policy against directly commercial content. So you can add value, you can build an audience, you can build relationships and you can kind of convert them using the messaging systems and things, but you cannot directly post promotional stuff. Um, they just take down those kind of posts um, anyways. Just commenting, how terrible is it using some kind of app to do the translation? It's okay. Like people are forgiving, they will understand, and they appreciate you put the effort into trying to translate it for them. I should point out, Xiaoshu does not have a built-in translation feature. So if you write it in English, they they cannot easily translate it. The app won't turn it into a kind of slightly dodgy translation in Chinese for you. Uh, it will just present it in English to them. So they'll just scroll right past it. They won't bother trying to read it because it's not in their language. So they'll definitely appreciate that you've translated it into Chinese, even if there are little grammar mistakes and things. OK, cool. So this is the first kind of post I would recommend doing. We had a question earlier. Uh, someone asked you, what would you recommend as a very first post? What you do for your very first post, you could just do an intro video introducing yourself, talking a bit about you, whatever you feel comfortable with, just to get familiar with the platform. But after, after that, I would focus particularly on value posts. If you've got a new account and you're just starting out, post value post after value post. For like at least 10 or 20 posts they're all valuable useful engaging content that people like um because that's going to really boost your channel getting started question here someone said what's the best free translation app which bob has replied to with deep l yes i agree deep l is um a great translation tool for translating into any language including chinese you can also google translate's okay it's not perfect but it's okay there are also others like Baidu Translate is essentially the Chinese copy of Google Translate. Um, there's plenty out there. But yeah, I would also agree DeepL is a good translation option. Okay, so this is value posts. The next type of post I want to tell you about um, is what I call an inspiration post. These are just my own terminology. I sort of made this up. But um, what I call an inspiration post is a post you're making that inspires your target audience. It's appealing to their longer term goals. and It's inspiring them to take action and pursue those goals. 
As so for example, here I had a post that's just talking about my own studies. Remember, I'm targeting students who want to come study abroad in the UK. I studied at a top university in the UK. I studied science with my undergraduate degree. I'm talking students who want to study science. So I talked about my own experiences and it's inspiring people who want to go and do similar things. So that's a goal of an inspiration post. And it's going to reach some new leads, but it's also going to start inspiring the people who are already following you to really think more about taking action and pursuing those goals, which is the next step in that funnel towards making that purchase decision. Because they might have originally stumbled across, say, this post I did earlier, this one about websites for reading about science. Here they just wanted some free stuff, okay? They wanted some free websites to learn about science, They're not even thinking about classes yet. But when they come across an inspiration post talking about um, what they can achieve if they got really good at English and you know how they can come study abroad at top university or the cool things they can do, if only they worked on their English, maybe some classes would help. That's starting to make that decision and starting to put, connect the dots together for them to start working towards buying something off you. And then the final two types of posts I want to talk about is what I call personal posts and promotional posts. And you notice here I've written stories, oh, they're still loading. <laughs> Sorry, my internet's a bit slow. I've written stories rather than posts. So I'd actually recommend posting these using what's called Hey Posts on Xiaohongshu, which is very similar to Instagram stories. In that way, it's gonna reach your existing followers first. It's not gonna reach a, a wide number of new leads, but it's gonna really, it's gonna be really promoted to your existing followers. Because in reality, this is the next stage down again in that marketing funnel. Um, because these are people who've already got to know you a little bit. They've seen your valuable content. They've seen those inspiration posts that inspire them to start really thinking about buying some classes. But they want to buy classes with you. They actually know you as a And you want them to sign up now. So this is where you've got your personal stories and your promotional stories. So I had here, I did a video that was talking about me moving to Japan. It's just a little bit, people get to know a little bit more about me. Um, and I also did some posts, this was like a testimonial talking about um, how my previous students have enjoyed my classes and stuff like that. And it's starting to kind of get the word out there that by the way I offer classes, you might be interested in my classes, um, that kind of thing. So you can see we're working down that marketing funnel. I think I had a picture showing that whole funnel. Yeah, here we go. So we're starting off with those value posts and I would say this pie chart is meant to show kind of percentage wise how much content to post in each of these categories. Uh, first thing people are probably gonna come across is your valuable content. That's because the algorithm is really promoting value focused content. So this is gonna reach completely new leads and it's gonna attract them to follow you. And it's starting to show that you're an expert in what you do and makes people like you a bit, right? It's showing off that you know what you're doing and it's attracting them to follow. Then the next kind of content they're gonna to start to see are your inspiration posts and more value posts, of course, anything else you post in future. But then they're going to start to come across things like your inspiration posts, and that's going to inspire them to start thinking about actually taking real action towards their goals. For example, maybe I should start taking classes in this. After that, they might come across one of your story posts, a personal story, where you've talked about your own experiences, and they start to get to know you specifically as a teacher. So they're not just being inspired to take classes, they're now inspired to take classes with you, because they like you. And finally, that promotional stuff. I would keep this, literally, I put 10% here, but even less if you can. Like, I wouldn't post promotional content too often, partly because Xiaohu isn't a big fan of you posting promotional stuff, and it can put off people. Um, but if you don't tell people to buy, they're never going to buy. Um, so you do need to post occasional, slightly promotional thing. I wouldn't do a big buy now special offer, that kind of promotional post. But by promotional post, it could be talking about a success story of one of your students. It could be a testimonial. It could be just like a quick screenshot of one of your classes and a quick a story post saying, I had a great class today. Thank you, Max, for your hard work or something. So this is just reminding people that you're taking online classes. It may be a little call to action, some encouragement for them to reach out and actually purchase. So this is the kind of, it's not really a cycle. <laughs> this is the kind of steps, the first steps in your funnel that people can go down using the content that you're posting on Xiaohongshu. Okay, I've got lots of questions here in the chat. Nikki's saying, when you first introduce yourself in a video, do you ever mention that your ESL tutor was a best stay clear at this stage? I would say it depends on what your content is about. I actually wouldn't recommend in the first few seconds of the video first introduce yourself at all, actually. So when you start a video, focus on the key learning point of that video. Bear in mind that these days when people are watching things on social media, they're often flicking quite quickly through stuff. So they might only watch the first three seconds of that video. So in that first three seconds, you need to teach them something new. You need to tell them, you need to kind of hook them and inspire them to want to watch the rest of the video. So don't 
even introduce yourself at all at the very beginning. Say something like, do you want to learn how to use this idiom in everyday life? Or do you want to get uh, that international tech job of your dreams? Or whatever it is your niche is, is struggling with, some question they might have. And then go forward. But when you do get to the point where you introduce yourself, if it's relevant to the topic, you could say, I'm an ESL teacher. So if you're teaching something that's English related, which it probably is if you're trying to find ESL students, it's sort of backing up that you know what you're talking about. If you say, I'm a qualified ESL teacher who's been teaching online for five years now, and I've noticed that many of my students struggle with this, blah, 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 and then continue with the topic. So yeah, you can mention it, don't worry. But I wouldn't, like, try not to be too salesy on challenge you, because it's those first few stages in your marketing funnel. Question, comment here. I think it's best to treat your channel as if it was, say, a short form YouTube channel. Yeah, if you're familiar with YouTube Shorts, um, that kind of content is going very popular on many platforms. This is not just Xiaomi Show, actually, but many, many platforms are focusing more on this short term video content. Um, the content should stand on its own as if you were and engage in that way rather than seeming or being like a, a shill. It might be a typo there, I'm not quite sure what that means. But yeah, you're right, it should sort of stand on its own. People are, might stumble across that video having never seen any of your content before. So you want to kind of really hook them in, tell them a little bit about you, and then give them something valuable and encourage them to follow. That would often be your call to action in a lot of the posts. Follow for more content like this or save it to watch this again later, that kind of thing. Okay, Silver's saying, I want to work with preteens and teens, reading skills for decoding comprehension rather than the niche adults. Done that and did not find it satisfying. Fair enough. Is Shamsu was still the best place to post? Yes. So for me personally, I also focus on preteens and teens. Uh, my students at all range ranges, but like the students I much prefer teaching are the teenage students, um, mostly aged around sort of 12 to 15. That's been my own kind of my own favorite age range to teach. When we looked at those stats earlier, parents of teenagers are probably in say their 40s. So it's a small, much smaller percentage in terms of people who are on Xiaomi, but they're still there. And I've done very well targeting that audience. They, they are still there. If you post valuable content that's really niche down and we really focus on that audience, you can do well advertising on Xiaohongshu. Yeah. I would say that my experience in the Chinese markets, you're talking about kind of reading skills, decoding, and comprehension skills, things like that. That tends to be very popular with, say, elementary school students. Um, with teenagers, I often find they're starting to really think about their longer term goals. And if they're looking for extra English classes, they've often progressed beyond what's offered by platforms like VIP Kid, or nowadays quite a lot of them are using Cambly and stuff. Um, and they're looking for maybe more specialist focused classes can help them with their longer term goals. That's why I think I did quite well with my science theme classes because I was targeting students who already know they want to study science abroad. So they need to work on their scientific English. That might be something to bear in mind um, in terms of teenagers and what that kind of classes they might be looking for. Question here, are hashtags a thing on Xiaohongshu? Yes, there are hashtags on Xiaohongshu. Um, the algorithm doesn't push hashtags so much anymore. And it's a similar lot of platforms that have hashtags, people are reusing them and like tagging 50 different hashtags. Um, so the algorithm doesn't necessarily just care about hashtags anymore, but it's definitely something to optimize and think about when you're making your posts. We did a Xiaohongshu marketing bootcamp about four or five months back now. Um, the last time we did, we've done three of these so far, the Xiaohongshu marketing bootcamps. And we've always covered hashtags and stuff in those. And it's been something that people struggle a lot with, finding hashtags um, that can be really helpful to get your content to the right people. But it's not the be all and end all in terms of getting your posts out there on Xiaohongshu. There's also a section in the Xiaohongshu marketing course. I think I'll put a link below in the description of this video um, talking about hashtags. Okay, what question here? Some people post a review from a student or something similar to show that you're achieving with students. As long as you blur personal info for the students, is it okay? I would always ask permission from the student first, um, particularly if it's something they've sent in like a private message, um, just because it's kind of polite to ask their permission. And if they give you permission, you might they might also be willing for you to, to put a face to that testimonial. Um, so I would always ask permission first before posting things directly about your students or like clips from classes and stuff. But yeah, it's definitely a great thing to post as a kind of promotional content on Xiaohongshu. Had saying, is it okay to put the WeChat symbol on your promotional post? Is that not too salesy? Um, people don't necessarily see WeChat as a salesy thing. They see it as a, if you want to chat to me more. But that being said, Xiaohongshu doesn't like you taking people off their platform for obvious reasons. So you're not officially meant, like if you use the word WeChat in your post, um, or if you include your WeChat QR code, it's definitely a no-no. It'll get picked up by the AI and your post like it won't, it won't post your post if you directly mention WeChat or you include a QR code in the image. 
um, because it's against the Xiaomi rules. What I recommend you get people to do is to reach out to you by messaging on Xiaomi first. Once they message you on Xiaomi, then you say, add me on WeChat, and we can discuss more on WeChat. And people are often willing to do that because they know that Xiaomi messaging is a bit clunky and they'll, you'll miss the notifications and stuff. People know that WeChat is the place you go for chatting about stuff. Okay, I'm rambling. I also say the word stuff way too much. I apologize. <laughs> Should we use hashtags in English or only Chinese? Chinese. Everything you use, write on Xiaomi Shu, put in Chinese. If you write in English, it will show to English speaking people, which is not your target audience. Thank you. Thanks for that feedback. So Yasa is saying, it's really great info, Katie. Thank you. I'm glad you find this helpful. I do ramble a lot in these. I always worry about that, but hopefully you find some of this useful. Uh, Bob's saying, I know that IELTS is very popular in China, but are students prepared to pay more than Cambly rates? Yes, they will pay more than Cambly rates, partly because they're paying Cambly more than Cambly is paying you, right? Cambly's taking their cut out of that. So you can definitely charge more. I've seen people offering IELTS classes easily charging 30 to 40 US dollars an hour or much more than that if you can really special like niche down and show that you're really good at what you do, you're an IELTS specialist tutor. Cambly isn't like an IELTS specialist platform, so people don't necessarily see it as the place to go for IELTS classes. They see it as the place to go for cheap IELTS classes. Uh, but you don't want to be the place for cheap classes. You want to be the place for high quality classes. So yes, you can definitely earn much more. How can you show that a review is real? I would recommend like screenshot the review. If you've got permission from the student to share it, screenshot the review as they've sent it to you. So they sent it to you as a WeChat message. Take a, a screenshot of that message so you clearly see it looks like a WeChat message and then put that as your image in the post. Um, that kind of makes it more authentic. Okay. Oh, Bob's saying, thank you, you're welcome, Bob. And Nikki's saying, yes, so true, we can be. Yeah, absolutely. Also, they're massively underpaid teachers. Um, Anyway, we can do better. We can do better, guys, than Cambly. Cool. If anyone from Cambly is watching, you're wonderful. Please ignore my comments. <laughs> okay. So that was the idea of Xiaomi where to get started with posting on Xiaomi what kind of content to post. The next thing you want to do, and what we kind of already discussed a little bit with those questions, is bringing your leads from Xiaomi onto WeChat. And that's kind of the scary step sometimes. So just to review again our marketing funnel to zoom out, Look at the bigger picture, which is kind of the focus of today. We've talked about the first few stages on Xiaomi Shu. So valuable posts that subtract from your target audience, inspiration, oh gosh, I can't spell, uh, inspiration posts that inspire them to take action. And then you're gonna engage with them with these personal posts um, and the sales posts or the slightly promotional stuff that's starting to make them want to make that purchase decision. So this first stage, attracting, inspiring, and engaging your audience is being done here on Xiaomi Shu. Next, we wanna to move to WeChat. On WeChat, we can do that final conversion and sales process. Xiaomi is not the place for that because it's quite public. Xiaomi being a private messaging platform, people are willing to start talking to you individually about their exact English learning goals, starting to schedule like a trial class if you want to offer trial classes. Um, I would recommend, by the way, charging for your trial classes. You can still call it trial class and offer maybe half price or something, but there are quite a few free, free trial hoppers jumping around. Be careful with free trials. Um, but yeah, reach out as a place where you can start making that actual purchase decision. And then also it's useful for the ongoing communications to retain the students and then get them to recommend you to their friends. So that's the second half of our funnel. So big question for you guys to have a think about. How can you get people to get to add you on WeChat? Because WeChat, adding someone on WeChat is quite personal. It's like giving you, you giving your phone number to someone or giving your email address to a company. Like it's quite a lot of trusting you if they're gonna add you on their WeChat. So how can you persuade people to trust you and to want, like what incentive are you gonna to offer to make them want to add you on WeChat? And while you're thinking about that, I'm just gonna quickly catch up any last comments here. Oh, Nikki's saying, most of my students in China chose me for IELTS speaking practice. Good, getting very cheap. Ah, you can work on that, <laughs> but awesome. Yes, there's definitely a big, um, a big interest in the Chinese market in IELTS tutoring. Question here, do people post podcast snippets on Xiaomi Shu? That is an interesting idea. You know, I haven't seen that, but I can see that working. Um, so within Xiaomi Shu, on the story section of Xiaomi Shu, there's actually an audio recording option. You can post an audio story. Um, so you could do like really short snippets um, of audio there. I think it's up, I want to say a minute. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. There's a limit on how much you can post on it. Maybe a minute or so of audio you can post as an audio recording on stories. Or if you can edit it into a video format, um, just use a, a simple like image and then just have an audio playing at the top. 
you can just use a simple video editing app. Most video editing apps will be able to do that for you. You could have podcast snippets on Xiao Hongshu. That's definitely a good idea. Um, the thing is, you kind of think about what your next step is and what kind of content you're posting. Because Xiao Hongshu is quite a visual platform. People do like to look at stuff as much as they like to listen to stuff. Um, and you can't include links. So Xiao Hongshu does not have the ability and they'll block your... If you do it too often, they'll block you, but also they'll take down that specific post if it includes any QR codes or direct links um, to any external content. So, yeah. Is there any other platform similar to Spotify, iTunes, podcasts, etc., for the Chinese market? I have to admit, I don't know. I'm going to look into that um, and maybe get back to you about that because I'm not, there must be podcasting platforms, but none that I'm aware of as being kind of big places for ESL teachers to promote. But it's definitely somewhere to look into because if no one else is promoting that, you could be the first one there and kind of capture that corner of the market. Somebody's saying, I've seen 30 minute long videos on Shout So Yes, you can post. Yeah, let's come back to what we were talking about earlier. You can definitely post much longer videos. I think it might be 20 minutes, maybe it's 30 minutes. The limit is if you upload it via the computer app, not on the phone app, but if you upload it on the web browser version of Xiao Shu, you can upload longer videos. As I was saying, though, it's not really a place for long form content. Billy Billy is a better app for that. Um, but if you wanted to, you can post longer stuff. Okay. Ooh, sorry, lots of questions. <laughs> Loads of questions. Thank you, everyone. King Minos is saying if we have a website, would it not be better to skip WeChat and put them on the website? get their email address. WeChat's more personal. That should be the last step. So actually, that's in maybe introducing an extra step in your funnel. And is that extra step actually helping? Would be my question there. What do you got on your website? What are you offering on the website? That can help them make that into Azure WeChat and answer, contact you and discuss classes. I'd almost say it's the other way around. I would get them on WeChat first, use that as a place to make that sales decision. And if you want to use your website for the admin side, like scheduling the classes and processing payments, you can send it to them on WeChat to make the purchase. I would almost do it that way around. In China, websites aren't such a big thing. Like people don't go to a company's website. People go to a company's WeChat official account. Um, Websites just haven't been a big thing. If you look at even big ESL companies, like Chinese ESL companies, like VIP Kid, they had a website, but it was pretty basic. It was more of a landing page pointing people in the direction to contact them on WeChat. Some of the companies I've worked with previously that have been a little bit smaller. One company I talked with had maybe 300 or so teachers, so it was a smaller, still a large-ish company. You know, it's not a complete startup, but they were relatively small compared to those other platforms. And they did everything purely via WeChat messaging. Same with Abridge Academy, their own shooting program. Um, we have probably about 600 or so active students and all of that has been through WeChat messaging. Parents didn't want a website. They actually found it too impersonal. They liked that personal connection. Um, and that company I was saying before that had about 300 or so tutors, they, they said the same thing. So I asked them, why don't we have a website? It's so annoying having to message on WeChat all the time because it annoyed me as a tutor. And they said, no, parents wanted a personal sales assistant to message them on WeChat. They wanted that personal touch. Um, Sorry, I'm rambling, but yeah, you don't necessarily need a website, I would say. Think about what value your website is adding in terms of that marketing funnel. Okay, next question, Doretta's asking, how much do you charge for four students, small groups for K6 teaching, phonics, literacy, comprehension, et cetera? Teaching more than 40 years, great, excellent experience there. With certification, good. Online teaching in more than 10 years ESL. So you're an experienced, qualified teacher, um, you clearly know what you're doing in terms of teaching, you're a good teacher, you can be charging good rates for your classes. Don't undersell yourself. Uh, I don't want to put a number on it because it's your business and exactly you know how much you want to charge is your decision. But I would say on average, people are offering classes, the high value classes, um, at minimum $40 an hour. Um, but I've seen people advertising maybe $60 to $70 an hour as well for very focused classes. Think about what value you're adding to your target student. Now, if you're teaching younger students, you talk to your case of six, phonics, literacy or so on, the English classes are not necessarily directly adding financial value to them. They haven't got a really strong reason to learn English right now for the next step in their career or something. So it'd be harder to charge the really high rates. But if you've got a group class, you think about what you charge each student and then over the group, maybe $50 in total. I'm not sure. Um, but my main message here is keep your prices high. You can always discount a little bit later on if you're finding if people aren't liking your prices. But put the prices high initially would be my, my recommendation there. Oh, we've got feedback here from How's Food Review. I post my podcast and it does well. Is that on Xiao Hongshu? Fantastic. That's really great to hear. I was told to check out Xiao Xiao Zimiao. 
一起听播客，一起听播客。哦、oh, ，是 together listen something for podcast。小子喵喵 ，Gosh， my Chinese is very rusty. I am going to Google that and look that up. Thank you so much for the suggestion. That sounds like a podcasting app. So really appreciate that. I am going to look into this and come back to you later after the webinar. Oh, Daniel's saying no sound at the moment, but everyone else is saying can see and hear fine. Okay, some distortion time to time. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Sorry, might be my internet. I do apologize. Do I say love it? Thank you. Cool, thanks. So, sorry, we've got off topic again. How can we get people onto your WeChat? Was a big question there. I'm also aware of the time. I'm going to skip forward to some suggestions. But、um, do have a think about how this applies to you and your own teaching as well. So, how to get people onto your WeChat? How do you persuade them to give you their personal contact details to get in touch with them directly? We have something called a lead magnet. So, in marketing, you will hear this terminology, lead magnet, and it's essentially it's a freebie, something you're going to give them for free in return for them giving you your contact details. For example,、um, you might see a link under this webinar or a lot of my webinars saying something like, "Get my free Chinese social media marketing guide by joining my email list," and you'll see this all the time. On social media, right? Company saying, "Give us your email address, and we'll send you some free thing." This is essentially what you're doing here. Now, on Xiaohu, we said there's a basic messaging system on Xiaohu, but you can't send files, and you can't, you can't, you can create groups actually on Xiaohu, but there's not many advanced features that you can do on the Xiaohu messaging system. So when people message you, you can then reply to them and say, "Look, I can't send you this file on Xiaohu. Please add me on WeChat, and I'll send you this file." The ideal lead magnet is something that's adding value to your time. That's genuinely useful,、um, but it's also something that doesn't take up your time. So something you make once and then you can send to people easily and quickly. So ideally, something like a PDF document. This could be an ebook. It could be a video series of some pre-recorded videos you've made on a certain topic.、It、could be a live webinar you're running or a trial class. I'd be wary of calling these too much of a lead magnet because they're a little bit salesy. But、um, this could be something you offer. Quiz or a level test that they can do to check their English level. So, say I'm talking about targeting kids who want to study abroad. Is your English good enough to study at a top UK university? Send like contact me, drop me a message. I'll send you my free test, and you can check if your English level is good enough to apply this year.、Um, sounds like an odd thing, but people want to know that, so it's useful content for them. Oh, hiccups again. Too much sushi today. Okay.、Um, also, another thing is going to be a learning community. So, if on WeChat you've got a WeChat group. That's、um, where you're sharing useful resources, or maybe you're running activities on a weekly basis. You could be offering a group class once a month, or something like a free group class that you're running in this learning community. You can advertise that as a free WeChat group for people to join. On Xiaohu, if you're able to set up groups on Xiaohu, I think you need a certain minimum number of followers for it to open up the feature to create group chats on Xiaohu. But you can also have a Xiaohu group that works in a similar way to this. And they can directly promote that on your Xiaomi profile.、Um, another thing you can send is like a vocab list. This is great if you're targeting like exam prep. We talked about IELTS, I think, already. Similarly, with practice exam papers, self-study packs, worksheets,、um, and even like a study challenge. You know, IELTS exam is in three weeks' time. Let's have a study challenge every day. I'm going to send you a target for the day and a worksheet or something. Join my WeChat group now to get this stuff. So this is what you're trying to do. You're offering something free in return for getting their WeChat details. I said in return for them adding you, like you'd send them your WeChat details, and they would add you. Oh, comment from Daniel about I think it's the Wi-Fi. Yeah, I apologize. It's probably my end. My Wi-Fi is a bit dodgy.、Um, my cable company once fed me a story about sharks having eaten the undersea cables between Taiwan and China. Then I heard the same story else. You know what? I think I heard that story too. Maybe it's a real thing, but it's、um, interesting. Hopefully, no sharks have eaten the cables today. And the rest of the webinar keeps coming through fine. Okay, King Myers is saying website would be a repository of emails. There would be extended content that would sustain you as an actual brand. You can't stay in sending individual chat WeChat messages. I think this is where there's a big difference between Chinese market and some like other markets. So, for example, in the UK, I wouldn't trust. I'm from the UK.、Uh, I wouldn't really trust a company that doesn't have a website because I'm thinking, what kind of legit business doesn't have a website? Why would I send money to someone who's been messaging me online? This sounds to me, it sounds dodgy and suspicious. Okay, we expect to see websites. However, in the Chinese market, is quite different.、Um, they very much value that personal connection, and you, particularly if you're an independent teacher, you are your brand. 
So you personally are your brand. And if you have a very faceless website that looks a bit corporate and a bit boring, that's not necessarily representing you so well as a brand as you could do via private messaging. I'm not saying you can't have a website. I'm just saying there's a place for it and think very carefully about what value is adding to that marketing funnel. Um, personally, I would say a website is useful if you need to manage the admin side. So scheduling, scheduling classes and payments. There are websites, plugins you can get that have calendars where people automatically book stuff, that kind of thing. That's a good, good useful website. Another good useful website is if you want to expand your business beyond just one-on-one -on -one individual classes. And again, it's helping with the organization and the management of that. So for example, if you're offering large group classes and you want people to be able to sign up in one place, or if you want to sell self-paced online courses, like video-based courses, like Udemy style courses, or if you want to run a membership system, or any of these other stuff that's not just private one-on-one -on -one teaching, you might need a website just to be able to manage that. And similarly, if you're hiring other teachers and you've got an agency, a website starts to create more of that formal business presence. But if you're an independent teacher just starting out, um, I would focus on messaging people individually because the Chinese market, they value more of that personal approach and they're not necessarily looking for a website in the first place. <laughs> Daniel's commented, I hit refresh, it's now okay. I guess the sharks have stopped eating the cables. Yeah, it's getting late right in Taiwan. I'm in Japan, it's now 10 p.m. here. I think Taiwan might be an hour behind, might be 9 p.m. Sharks have probably gone to bed. So yeah, hopefully the rest of the webinar is gonna be all good for you. Okay. Cool. So I think that brings us to the final step of the webinar. So we've found a huge number of leads on Xiaoshu with your value-focused posts. You've got that content that's kind of getting them to, inspiring them to focus and pursue their dreams, giving them that valuable content need build a relationship then you've moved them on to wechat by giving them some freebies some incentives what do you do next how do you convert them into paying students what do you think let me know what do we need to do next nine six here sharks are asleep yep it's nap time for sharks most definitely actually are they nocturnal i feel like i should know this as a science teacher are they nocturnal or not i'm not sure anyways Okay, Colette's commenting, hey, just arrived. How do you use WeChat in regards to eBooks? I do have WeChat, but creating a group is not easy. I do have a website. So for eBooks, I'm thinking here more along a, just a PDF of the eBook. Um, I know there's like ways of doing eBooks, like on Kindle publishing and that kind of stuff. But um, my recommendation, if you're using it as a freebie, like a marketing thing, just save it as a PDF, a PDF book you've written and send it to them. It doesn't have to be a massive long book, by the way. It could just be a quick guide to applying to American universities, or it could be a story you've written for kids, um, focusing on a specific phonic skill, something like that, depending on what your niche is. So you're saying find out the needs and show how we can fill them. Yes, so the last step, converting leads into paying students. So what should we do? You need to figure out what classes they want. What do they want to, what they want to learn? How can you help them learn that? And this is where the ability to privately directly message with your students is really helpful because they're not going to tell you that in a public place like Xiaomi Um, so not public comments. So you can message them directly. You might have a form you ask them to fill out with some more details about that final step of actually making the purchase decision, um, but just chatting to them, getting to know them and their English learning. Great. Okay, so that is our very final step. My suggestion here is that it's about getting to know them personally, building that relationship. Um, offering the opportunity to try out your classes. It could be a trial class. It could be a group webinar or something you're running where you're doing some sort of group type class. It could be a free class. It could be offering a discounted first class, something like that. Um, you start to then encourage them to actually buy your classes. You can be a lot more promotional on WeChat um, because it's not such a public platform. Oh, fun fact here from teacher Brenda, thank you. Are sharks nocturnal? Sharks can be active at all different times. Some are most, mostly nocturnal, others are more active during the day. Well, there we go. Luckily, those sharks around Taiwan are the not nocturnal kind and have stopped nibbling Daniel's cables. <laughs> Thank you for the suggestions, that insight, Brenda. Learn something new every day. Okay. I feel like I was just coming to the end here. We want a final step. Yes, a final step then, once we get them onto WeChat. Um, many, many steps is the answer there. So I wanted to just end today's webinar. Um, by telling you a bit about our WeChat Marketing Bootcamp. It's free and it's coming up in a couple of weeks time or 10 days time it starts. Um, and you're gonna be learning a lot more about those final steps in the marketing funnel. Once you've got them on WeChat, you're messaging with them. Maybe they haven't bought classes right away, what do you do? So we're gonna be talking about how to optimize your WeChat account to help make those sales. 
using WeChat groups to nurture your leads and promote your classes. This, by the way, is what I'd recommend if they don't buy classes straight away, invite them to your WeChat group instead. And in the WeChat group, they can continue building that relationship on a more personal level. And later on, they might purchase classes. Another thing we'll be learning about is using WeChat moments. This is a bit like Shoushaw in terms of you post videos and images and stuff on your WeChat moments. It's not so public because it doesn't recommend your moments beyond your existing contacts. But it's a good way to add value, like, oh, excuse me, hiccups, and build those relationships. And of course, you need to keep in touch with the students that actually make the sale and be learning about some strategies and top tips on that in the WeChat Marketing Bootcamp. And if we think back to our original funnel, we talked about how the funnel at the end of the funnel, it then kind of goes back out again as your students start recommending you to their friends and bringing in new leads, building on that existing network. And that's something you can do directly through WeChat with referral marketing strategies. And we'll be talking about those as well in the WeChat Marketing Bootcamp. So do come along to that. I'm just going to pop the link in the description. If you're watching the replay, it's also underneath uh, today's video. Um, if you're watching the replay several weeks later, we have these WeChat we have these marketing boot camps every single month in our Facebook group. I say every single month. We took a break last month because of the new year and stuff. But almost every month, we have a free marketing boot camp in the Facebook group. So this month is WeChat marketing. We've previously done some on Xiaoju marketing. We've previously covered your marketing strategy. Um, we even looked before at sort of social media marketing in general, including things like Instagram marketing. So all kinds of stuff are in the Facebook group. We do these every month. So yeah, if you've missed this one because you're watching the replay in a few months time, don't worry, there's more free marketing boot camps in the Facebook group and that link will still work. Okay, so yeah, it starts in two weeks time. It'll be on Facebook and it's an opportunity to learn more about WeChat marketing, those final stages of the marketing fund. I'm gonna take this opportunity to read out some of his wonderful feedback. because I just, I really love hearing from teachers. I feel like I spend a lot of time talking at a screen. <laughs> so it's really lovely to hear such wonderful feedback from people who've attended webinars like this um, and have joined in our boot camps. Here's some wonderful feedback from people who took the WeChat boot camp specifically previously. We ran the WeChat boot camp last in, I think it was October, um, last time we ran this. So Maria said the WeChat boot camp was just the thing I needed. It was informative to the point and very well well rounded. I can't speak today. As I say it's gone 10 p.m. in Japan. <laughs> um, my words are merging together. She said she's really grateful for the time and effort Katie devoted to educate us on WeChat marketing strategies, different tools we can use to reach more clients. Um, Dania said these bootcamp sessions were amazing. I don't have much experience using WeChat. I felt lost and confused at first. Um, but with Katie's help, I'm excited to get learners and growth in my WeChat group. She was always there to reach out to during the bootcamp sessions and afterwards to help me more. So thank you for that wonderful feedback from Dina there. And finally, we had Brian. Um, Brian said that after setting up his profile correctly, he was contacted within 10 minutes by a former student um, who booked lessons with her, booked lessons with him um, after a whole year of no contact. So something, another thing we talk about on WeChat is how to build those relationships and maintain relationships with existing contacts. We might not have made that purchase decision previously, but then later on, they change their mind and sign up for classes. So within 10 minutes, Brian had um, got a new student buying classes with him. He also learned how to set up and grow WeChat groups um, to reach more people. And he said, I highly recommend this bootcamp for anyone teaching Chinese students. So yeah, this is some wonderful feedback. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. We had lots of great feedback the last time we ran the WeChat Marketing Bootcamp. So I do hope you guys find it helpful this time around. It's free, so anyone tuning in who missed that, it's totally free. The link is somewhere in the comments or under the video or somewhere around to sign up. Um, so do check that out. And of course, we also have social media marketing courses. You might be thinking, Katie, that bootcamp sounds great, but I'm a bit busy, can't make it. Um, or I want to know right now, I can't wait two weeks. <laughs> we have a even more in-depth WeChat marketing course and also a Xiaoshu marketing course, which go, as I say, so much in-depth. It's a series of videos and tutorials that really work you through how to use all the features of these apps, top tips and strategies for marketing, um, so many suggestions and great insights in these courses. So do feel free to check those out as well. Again, I'm going to pop the link in the comments. Uh, come on, computer, you can do this. But do feel free to check those out. Okay, that was my sales pitch over. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to today's webinar. I know we talked about a lot, um, so it might have been a bit of information overload. But we talked about the idea of creating a marketing funnel, starting with Xiaoshu, your kind of viral marketing platform, sharing those value-focused posts, bringing in new leads with these educational or useful content for them, inspiring them to pursue their goals, and helping them make that next step to contact your WeChat. And then once you've got them on WeChat, you can make that sales 
um, decision, you make that sales decision. So that's kind of what we talked about today. There's a lot to cover. Does anyone have any questions um, or anything they would like to ask? Um, I know I'm rambling a lot. Let me have a look at the chat. Okay, lots of people saying thank you. Thank you so much, Colette, for tuning in. Thanks, Janilda. I'm glad you found this helpful. It's awful, awful, awesome, awesome information session. Thank you. I'm glad you found this useful. Daniel saying, Chomilinda, I learned about marketing and Asian sharks. <laughs> Absolutely. Brenda, thank you for your insights into the sharks. Um, definitely great to hear. Okay, Bob saying, thank you for the useful information today. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. It was brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I really appreciate your feedback and your comments. So thank you very, very much, Dr. Rita and Loretta and Pedro. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate it. Okay, Daniel's saying, will the chat be available after the session? I'm not sure it will, actually. Um, I can't remember what I said on YouTube before the chat. Um, but the, all the links will be in the description under the video. So if you're watching the replay or you're re-watching this later, you'll be able to at least watch the links um, in the... So you'll be able to find the links in the description under the video. Was there anything in particular, Daniel, from the chat you wanted to save? In which case, let me know and I'll take a screenshot of it now and then remember to put it in the links uh, under the video to come back to later. So let me know anything in particular you'd like to keep. Just saying, so I have to go. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you for joining us, Pedro. Hope you found this helpful. Oh, I think I just saw this one earlier. I was saying, thank you, Katie. Vicky, where do I start? <laughs> so much to do. I would recommend starting by um, downloading the apps, downloading WeChat, Xiaoxu, and having a go, um, and joining our free bootcamp, which the link is probably buried in the chat now, but is also on description under the video. So join our free bootcamp. We'll get you some of that. Christine saying, thank you so much. Great info. Thank you. Okay, Sally Ann, I've downloaded the channel, sure, but it's all Chinese to me. Did forget my profile set up. Okay, so yes, is you mean that the interface itself is in Chinese? If the interface itself is in Chinese, you can change it in the settings. Let me very quickly. You have to go in the Xiaohongshu, where's Xiaohongshu gone? There we go. Put it in Chinese first and then move it back for you. So settings, general languages, Chinese. Okay. So if it's accidentally in Chinese for you, it looks so if, if, if the menu itself is in Chinese, ignore the content. If stuff that people's posting is in Chinese, that's expected, that's normal because Xiaoxiu won't translate it for whatever language they wrote it in. But if the menu at the bottom, so these ones at the bottom here are in Chinese, you need to click on the one on the far right. That means me, takes you to your profile. On your profile, you'll see a little cog. Click on the little cog, that's the settings cog. Then it's one, two, three, the fourth option down on the list here. This fourth option here is the general settings. Click on the general settings. Okay, it brings up this screen. Ignore the stuff at the top. At the very bottom, there's two things to click through. The top one of those things to top, click through has three Chinese characters. It uh, says so Yu and means multiple languages. Click on that one. And then in this list, sorry, my computer's doing weird things, trying to get to show properly. Come on, computer. Ah, it's, there we go. Uh, it says English. Click on English. And then don't forget to click the, the pink button in the top right corner to confirm. So click on the confirm button. And then magic is back in English. So if your Xiaomi for some reason is defaulting to Chinese, that's how you change it back to English. If you didn't catch that, watch the replay of this. I think I also have a video on it in the WeChat group because I got asked this many times. Um, it's meant to pick up your system default language, but sometimes it just doesn't. Um, so yeah, that's how to change it back. Okay, Melody's saying, thanks so much, Katie. Hope to start implementing your suggestions and seeing results. I'm so excited to see how things go for you, Melody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. I'm glad you found this helpful. You must say, Xiaomi Shu Marketing Course is actually very good, just saying. Thank you. I'm glad you find the course helpful. I had some really wonderful feedback from the course. Um, I feel like I need to market it more, which is why I've mentioned it a lot in today's webinar. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad to hear that you're finding the course helpful. Thanks. I also added some more content to the course recently. So if you haven't checked it out in a while, there is new content that's been added to that course. Okay, and Nikki's saying, thank you. I will. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. I think I'm going to wrap things up then because I have, as always, overrun massively. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I hope you found today's session helpful. Um, 
as I said before, do check out the links in the description of the video for the free WeChat bootcamp. There's also a bunch of other free stuff like our Facebook groups, free Chinese social media guide, all kinds of stuff in the comments um, in the description. So please do check out all of those things. And I'm, I'm going to say good night because it's getting late. So thank you so much for joining us. Good luck, everyone, with your social media marketing. And I hope to see you in the bootcamp in a couple of weeks' time. So I'm going to end here. Thank you and goodbye. Have a great day, evening, whatever it is where you are.